welcome back to another interesting lesson and what we will learn here is one what is heat in context of system and its environment two when is heat considered positive or negative three absorption of heat by solids and liquids four what is heat capacity five what is specific heat capacity and six what is molar specific heat capacity so we seem to have our hands full but let me tell you that this is an easy lesson but still i would like you to be all ears well before we go ahead let me request you to press the subscribe button if you've not done already so that you continue to get notification on all videos that are released and if you like it please give it a thumbs up and do share with someone who can benefit from it. So if you have a bottle of chilled cola in a room, you know it will get warmer with time and the temperature rises fast initially and then it rises a little slowly till the temperature of the bottle and room is the same. The two are then said to be in thermal equilibrium or say at a macroscopic level, nothing is changing anymore. And when I say macroscopic level, essentially what I mean is what is visible to your eyes as opposed to microscopic level, which is not visible to your eyes, nothing is changing. Well, the same would apply to a cup of hot coffee left in a room and allowed to cool down. That, that too will fall to temperature of the room, thus establishing thermal equilibrium. So in physics, we would term the cold ring or the hot beverage as a system that has temperature Ts and the room or the air that is in the room as the environment that has temperature Te. Well, if the two are not equal, Ts will change and so will Te till the two are at the same temperature or Ts is equal to Te and the equilibrium is reached. It would be obvious to you that Ts will change uh, a lot more than Te which might change to a very small extent. So what is happening here is that thermal energy of the system is changing because of heat transfer between the system and the environment. Now the thermal energy is the internal energy of the system or if you're talking about the environment then of the environment and the transferred energy is called the heat and is denoted by the symbol Q. So we say that Q or heat is positive when the energy is transferred to the system's thermal energy and negative when it is transferred from the system's thermal energy to the environment and we say that heat is lost by the system. So we see that if this is the system and this is the surroundings, then if Ts is greater than Te, energy flows out of the system and Q then is less than zero. And if, well, Ts is equal to Te, no heat flows either way and Q is zero. And if Ts is less than Te, heat flows from the environment to the system and Q is considered greater than zero. So with all that we've just discussed, we could say that heat is nothing but the energy transferred between a system and its environment because a temperature difference exists between them. So we saw that heat transfer has the ability to change the temperature of the system and scientists found that change in temperature of a body is proportional to the amount of heat transfer that happens or Q is proportional to delta T. Then the constant that connects the two entities is called C or the heat capacity of that mass or body. So we can write this as Q is equal to C delta T or we can say that this is equal to C into T final minus T initial where T final is the final temperature and T initial is the initial temperature of the body. And you can easily make out that C has a unit of energy per degree or energy per Kelvin and is often written dimensionally as calories per Kelvin or calories per degree centigrade. You could also use the dimension as joules per Kelvin. Well, I, I must stop here and express my discomfort about using the word capacity alongside heat 
as I feel it is a little misleading in this context and probably the scientists should have used some different word instead. And I say this because the use of word capacity somehow makes us imagine that heat is contained in the body or the body has limitation in taking in heat. Remember the term heat pertains to transfer of energy and not containment of energy in a body. As such heat can be transferred if there is temperature difference between two bodies and in the process the object can melt or even vaporize. So let us now move on to understand the concept of specific heat. So if you take two objects made of same material say iron then the heat capacities will be proportional to the masses. So a larger piece of iron will have larger heat capacity and smaller one will have smaller heat capacity which essentially means that the larger mass requires more heat to raise it through a certain temperature compared to a smaller mass. So it becomes important to define heat capacity per unit mass so that when we use this term it is the same for all sizes of mass for the same material. So we use the term specific heat that is defined by the symbol small c and is nothing but the heat capacity which we learned earlier per unit mass. So then we rewrite this equation as Q is equal to Cm delta T or Cm T final minus T initial. So while heat capacity of 8 kilogram mass of iron could be 3040 but the specific heat of iron is 380 joules per kilogram Kelvin which is nothing but the heat required to raise one kilogram of iron by one Kelvin. So here is a list of specific heat of some substances. Well, you can see that water really has high specific heat or in other words, the heat required to raise a temperature of one gram or kilogram of water is higher than the other substances listed here. So molar specific heat is yet another way of expressing heat capacity or specific heat. What we do is that instead of taking a unit of mass of the substance, we take a mole of the substance. And if you remember your chemistry, a mole of substance is nothing but 6.02 into 10 to the power 23 elementary units of substance where elementary unit is nothing but atoms or molecules. Thus, one mole of aluminium is a collection of 6.02 into 10 to the power 23 atoms of aluminium and one mole of water will be 6.02 into 10 to the power 23 molecules of water. So if quantities are expressed in moles, specific heat must also be expressed in mole instead of unit of mass. So then it is called molar specific heat. So here is a table that shows molar specific heat of some substances. So the molar specific heat of lead is 26.5 joules per mole Kelvin, which means that 26.5 joules are required to raise the temperature of one mole or 6.02 into 10 to the power 23 atoms of lead by one Kelvin. So this brings us to heats of transformation. So when a solid or a liquid is heated or energy added, the temperature may not necessarily rise. What can happen is that the sample changes from one state or say phase to another without temperature change. So let's explore this a little deeper. We know that matter exists in three states, the molecules in solid state, are in a way logged into a pretty rigid tight structure due to high cohesion between the molecules or atoms. Liquids do not have rigid structures like solids and they can flow and take shape of any container they are put in. In the vapor state or gaseous state, the molecules are even more energetic and move a lot more freely. They, they kind of fill up the full volume of any container they are put in and you may like to note the emphasis on the word full volume. A liquid does not really fill the full volume, but a gas does. So let us now understand the thermodynamics of melting. Well, we know from our experience that melting a solid means 
to change its state from solid to liquid. And how does this happen? Well, if you provide enough energy to the atoms of the solid to break their cohesion with each other and free them from the rigid structures, melting would happen. So when you melt ice to form water at zero degrees, you have to provide heat or energy to the piece of ice to do so. Well, freezing then should be the reverse of it. You take the energy out of the liquid so that the molecule lose energy and reform the rigid structure or ice. So let us now get to understand what is the heat of vaporization LV. So you see we have put a V here to denote that this is the heat of vaporization. So you need to put LV calories or joules of heat to change the state of unit mass of a substance from liquid to gas. Well, the same amount of energy would be required uh, to be taken out of the gaseous state of that substance to convert it back into liquid state. For water at its normal boiling point, the LV value is equal to 539 calories per gram or in terms of mole it is 40.7 kilojoules per mole or if you were to put it in uh, kilograms it will be 2 to 5 6 kilojoules per kilogram so if you take a gram of water at its boiling point say 100 degrees centigrade and add 539 calories to it the entire gram of water will convert to vapor at the same temperature or 100 degrees centigrade. Well, if you wish to convert back this vapor into liquid, you need to take out 539 calories from this gram of vapor and you'll get back your water at 100 degrees centigrade. Likewise, when the phase changes from solid to liquid, the mass again needs to absorb heat and this is called the heat of fusion or LF. So we put an F here now to denote that this is the heat of fusion. So you need to put LF calories or joules of heat to change the state of unit mass of uh, a substance from solid to liquid. Now the same amount of energy would be required to be taken out of the liquid or we say that the liquid needs to release heat to put it back in solid state. For ice at its normal freezing temperature, the LF value is 79.5 calories per gram, which is equal to 6.01 kilojoules per mole or 333 kilojoules per kilogram. And you can notice that Kelvin or degree centigrade is not appearing here in the denominator because this change is happening at the same temperature or there is no change in temperature. So if you take a gram of ice at its freezing point, say 0 degrees, and add 79.5 calories to it, the entire gram will convert a liquid at 0 degree. Well, if you wish to convert this liquid back into ice, you need to take out 79.5 calories from this gram of water at 0 degrees to get back ice at 0 degrees. So if you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and please do not forget to subscribe to this channel for many more interesting videos.